Lift up your voice in song to the mighty one. Lift up your hands in praise. Fall on your knees at the throne of the Holy One. Offer yourself to the Ancient of Days. He is the light that shines in the darkness. He is the rock that stands. Glory and honor and power be unto the Lamb. Lift up your voice in song to the Mighty One. Lift up your hands in praise. Fall on your knees at the throne of the Holy One. Offer yourself to the Ancient of Days. Jesus Christ is Lord. Brothers and sisters, we always start off this way. This is the meaning of our lives. Jesus Christ is Lord. And this is Daily Bread. I'm Father Al Lauer. Glad you're with us. And today we're going to talk about birth control. Now, whether you have anything to do with birth control or not, this is an extremely important matter because it's a matter of truth. And people you talk to, people you relate to, will have this particular matter on their minds and a decision that they need to make and an obedience they need to give to the Lord and to His divine revelation. And so this is a very important matter. Obviously, I have nothing to do with birth control myself personally, but I'm so thankful that God has showed me all about this. I'm so thankful for the teaching of the Bible and the teaching of the church. It's certainly a big help to me personally. I can see how these various principles can help me understand how the Lord works and help me understand the body of Christ. And so it is a, it's a great, great revelation. It's something to be excited, excited about. Say, oh, that's easy for you to say. You're a priest or something. I'm talking about, you know, when a command comes from somebody, you can learn a lot about the somebody. You can learn about the love of that somebody. And that's what we're talking about. The love of our Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. We're going to start off blessing everybody. This water reminds us of the life that we have in Jesus Christ by virtue of our baptisms and our life of faith. Let's pray right now. Father, we pray for everyone who's watching this program. We ask for hearts that are open. We ask, Lord, that we would not uh, come with our prejudices. We'd come uh, with a spirit of obedience saying, Lord, teach me. What's your word say? What's your church say? Lord, your will be done. Show me about myself. Show me about the kingdom. Show me about your plan of salvation. And most of all, Father, show me about you. I want to get to know you. I want to know all the things that you've done and the way that you've made us and the way that you're working. I want to know about you because I love you, Father. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Holy Spirit. Right now, why don't you just make a commitment to the Lord? Why don't you just say, Jesus, just pray with me if you can say it. I know some of you can. Jesus, I trust you. I repent of my sins. I decide to live for you and for you alone. I decide to do your will and not mine. Lord, I'm all yours. My life belongs to you. Oh, fill me with your Holy Spirit to guide me to all truth. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's start off with John 16, 13. You might say, what in the world would that have to do with birth control? We have a little pamphlet called Birth Control. If you'd like more information about what we talked about today, you just send in for the pamphlet. You'll see our address on the screen. There's a few other pamphlets that might be of help to you. All right. The opening quote on this pamphlet is John 16, 13. When he comes, however, who's, who's he? Being the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will speak only what he hears. The Holy Spirit will guide us to all truth. Praise God. Praise God. Now, as many Catholics are ignoring the church's teaching based on the Bible against artificial means of birth control, the Lord is raising up spirit-filled people from all kinds of denominations who have received God's truth on this subject. A lot of people say, well, artificial birth control, that's a Catholic thing. 
No, it's, it's a matter of truth, and it doesn't make any difference whether you're a Catholic or who you are. It's still going to be true. If there were no Catholics in the whole world, there still would be the truth of what is God's will about artificial means of birth control. Just because the Catholic Church has taken its God-given responsibility to teach the truth doesn't mean it's a Catholic issue. Just, just because a male man would, would make a point to deliver a letter to you doesn't mean that that male man is, uh, is really the issue. No, what's in the letter is the issue. Just if you don't agree with the Catholic Church, don't agree with the Catholic Church, but agree with God. Agree with God. Say, well, I don't agree with you. You don't have to agree with me. Agree with God. Is God for planning families His way without any pills, IUDs, or condoms to help Him? According to the way we understand God from the Bible, I've never seen a spirit-filled person who looks at the Bible and the power of the Spirit say artificial birth control was in accord with the revelation of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. See, it's, it's a matter of truth. It's a matter of God's will. It's not a matter of agreeing with some priest or some church. It's a matter of God's will. I've had spirit-filled couples come to me from Pentecostal churches and uh, Presbyterians, they didn't come to me, but I've heard of that circumstance, and, and Lutherans and other, other denominations. And they say, We'd, the Spirit's teaching us that artificial birth control is not in accord with God's revelation. We talk to our pastor. He said our church doesn't talk about that. We say, this is part of our life. Doesn't God talk about our life? And the pastor said, well, that's not our business. And I say, well, what's God's revelation? What is God saying? He says, well, we don't get into that. I say, well, I thought we got into whatever God was saying about anything. This is something practical. If he's going to be Lord of our lives, we've got to know his will in this area. Well, they weren't able to get much satisfaction in their churches. So they come to a Catholic priest and say, we heard that your church teaches what God will is in this area. And we want to know because we want to be under the Lordship of Jesus in every detail of our lives. We know that He cares. The hairs of our head are numbered. Every detail of our life is, is something that He cares about, something that He's planned in His plan of salvation. So we want to know what His will is because we love Him and we want to obey Him. So I told him what, what God's, I told this, these couples what God's will was in these circumstances. And well, they were so happy. They said, oh, that's what the Spirit's teaching us. That's what the Spirit's teaching us. They were so thrilled. You see, when you're talking about artificial birth control, you're really talking about God, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. The Father, how does He father us? Can you trust Him to plan your family? Or do you have to kind of help Him out a little bit? Did he tell you to help him? I've never heard of anybody say, God told me to help him plan my family by uh, getting some pills or condoms or IUDs or whatever. I've never seen anybody maintain that. They said, well, God really doesn't care. What does that say about God? Of course he cares. He's our father. And if we can't trust him to plan our family, you think you can trust him to raise your body from the grave? You think you can trust him to lead you to heaven? You think you can trust him with the word? You think you can trust him with major details of life if you can't trust him to plan your family? I find that people who don't trust the Father to plan their family, guess what? They don't trust him to do a lot of other things either. And their faith erodes. I've never seen anyone involved in artificial contraception, whoever was growing in faith, it's, it's always an eroding experience, an eroding of faith. And then, of course, it's not just the Father, it's Jesus. Is He Lord of all of our, all of our lives, or is He just kind of, is it kind of a deistic God? Well, He just has a couple things on His mind, the rest of it, He says, do whatever you want. That's deism. That's not the, that's not the personal loving 
incarnate God that, that we know in Christianity. And what about the Holy Spirit? I've never seen a person alive in the Spirit who said the Spirit told them that artificial means of birth control was okay. I've seen a lot of people, uh, you know, do this very carelessly. They didn't really know any better. But as they were baptized in the Spirit, as the Spirit was stirred up, as they came alive in the Spirit, they said, wait a minute, the Spirit's telling me something here. He may be telling you something right now. A lot of people don't seem to understand how God works. That we, we say, well, God helps those who help themselves. God gave us a mind to use it. We use our mind to, to develop uh, these pills through advanced technology, and that's what God told us to do. Yeah, God gave us a mind, sure, but he didn't tell us to use our mind in that way. That's just not the way he works. You don't see that pattern in Scripture at all. So I, I think you get the idea. Now, um, in addition to that, we'd like to get into some other matters that make it quite clear that artificial means of birth control are not God's will. Other, there's a, there's, this, is, this really makes it clear. Now, um, I'm going to talk about three realities. I'm getting this from a little leaflet that we put out, and, and you can get this to look into it in more detail. It's called Sexual Sin, Abortion, and the Pill. Sexual Sin, Abortion, and the Pill, meaning the birth control pills. And a subtitle is Counseling for Post-Abortion Syndrome. And now, a basic principle of counseling, successful counseling, life-changing counseling is you must face reality. That's the great strength of the 12-step programs that AA uses and, and all kinds of other programs use it. it. It says face reality, you're out of control. Face reality, you need to rely on a higher power. Face reality, you must make retribution for what you've done. Face reality, you've got to talk to these people and be reconciled. You know, so it's, it's just a series of facing reality. This is a basic principle that we find in the scriptures and also find in uh, uh, effective counseling. Now, there are three realities in this whole area of sexual sin, uh, and this would also include artificial means of birth control that we must face. The first reality is what you might call the sexual bond. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 15 and 16, anytime there's sexual relations, anytime there's sexual intercourse, the members of the one become the members of the other. The two become one flesh. Now, this is any sexual intercourse. There's this bonding, this physical bonding. This is not just a temporary thing during the sexual act, but this is a permanent thing. Now, in order for a person to be free, that bond must be broken. Now, I bring this up because a lot of times artificial birth control is in the context of fornication and adultery. Not always, but sometimes. We have to face the reality of that sexual bonding. The way to deal with that is to repent. That removes the cause of it, which was the sin, and then turn to Jesus and say, the effect of my sin, the sexual bonding, no matter if I never see this person the rest of my life, no matter if I never know their name, I still am bonded. I'm pulled in different directions. I have what, what is experienced as kind of an unpredictable tension because of this bond. Jesus, I repented of the cause of this. I repented of the sin. Now, Jesus, no one else can deal with this except you. But I ask you to break the bond. He will. He'll set you free. The reason I bring this up is because without that uh, being understood, when you talk about the um, birth control problems, um, not everything will be settled uh, just by dealing with the birth control problems because of these other related problems. Another reality we must face is a parental bond. You might say, what does this have to do with birth control? We'll explain that in just a moment. The parental bond. Uh, if you are the physical parent, that bond is there, even if you never see the child. Uh, even if the child is adopted, that bond is still there. And um, 
it's important to uh, understand that. That bond will, will make uh, uh, something uh, much more uh, intense. You know, like because you're bonded to that child as a father, you just going up to that child and saying, I love you, would mean so much more than just someone else saying, I love you. Uh, for you to uh, have, commit incest with your daughter, as bad as fornication or adultery would be, this is even worse because of the parental bond. See, that parental bond makes things good things a lot better and bad things a lot worse. Now, the reason I bring this up is, is because of some means of artificial birth control are not contraceptive. They do not prevent conception. They are abortifacient. They prevent the implantation of the already conceived human being in the wall of the uterus. In plain words, they abort. So here we have an abortion. You might say, do condoms abort? Well, no, but IUDs always abort. The most common pill uh, would abort about 4% of the time when there's been a, a uh, conception. A, according to a study, I'll give you a reference here. This is a a little pamphlet called The Pill and the IUD. It's put out by the Couple of Couple League, and I'll give you the address slowly so you can get this. The Couple of Couple League, 3621 Glenmore Avenue, P.O. Box 11084, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45211. You can call them, area code 513. 661-7612. I'll say it again because I want you to have the, the scientific data behind what I've just said to make sure that, that you really understand. I remember talking to uh, uh, some doctors, and of course they're well aware of this, most of them, but some doctors really aren't even aware of this, uh, or they deny uh, the obvious scientific data here. I'll give you the, the address again. A couple of couple league. 3621 Glenmore Avenue, P.O. Box 11084, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45211, area code 513-661-7612. And you can order this pamphlet, the pill and the IUD. Now, as I said, the IUD is always abortifacient. But the pill, the most commonly used pill, is 4% of the time where there's been a conception, it will abort. And um, then the mini pill always aborts. Norplant aborts much more than the common pill. So uh, if you take the common abortion, uh, excuse me, um, pill, it's, we don't know for sure whether there's been an abortion. Of course, you would never take a pill saying, well, it could be an abortion. We really don't know. You, know, you can never do a thing like that. It's like, it's like pulling a gun out and shooting and saying, well, we might kill somebody. We might not. I don't know. Well, you can't do that. And so people who have taken the pill over a period of time, like if they've taken a pill over seven years, there's a statistical probability that they have aborted a child. Now, you could have taken it one time and aborted a child, or you could have taken it 10 years and never aborted a child. But in seven years, there's a statistical probability you have aborted a child. Um, now, so that makes artificial birth control using the pill just automatically, obviously wrong. It's an abortion. Now, to deal with this problem, you have to deal with it as you do with any abortion. You must repent. Name the child or children, apologize to the child, and trust this child to the Lord. You might say, how can I name a child? I don't even know if there is a child. I would encourage you to take a day or two, not any longer than that. Uh, we don't want you to go through a mind-wrenching experience. 
but just a day or two and just come to the Lord and say, Lord, I repent of having taken the pill. According to this, the scientific data, uh, there is a chance that I have aborted a baby here. I repent, Lord, and I ask that if I have aborted the baby, I want to acknowledge this child. I want to face that. I want to acknowledge the parental bond here. And I'll apologize to the child. Well, the way I'll acknowledge the parental bond, I'll name the child, but I have to know if there is a child here. So, Lord, no one can tell me that except you. So in, the, in a day or two, just set a time, a day or two. At the end of that, just whatever you have, just bring it to the Lord. Just as is, just bring it to the Lord. Whatever you have. Just if, you know, it might be very clear in a day or two, there are two names that stand out, and this is very uh, is different than your past experience. And it's so obvious. God is telling you, you have two children in addition to the ones you already have. You need to acknowledge those, child, those children, name them, um, ask their forgiveness, and and put them in the Lord's hands and expect to be united with these children in heaven. Or maybe after a day or two, you just say, I, I don't know what's going on here. We'll just bring it to the Lord and say, Lord, I tried to get clarity on this. I really didn't. I don't think you want me to be tortured by this over a period of time. So, Lord, uh, this is the best I could do, and here it is. And, Lord, if there's anything I need to repent of, I just repent of it. Lord, even if there was an abortion, was not an abortion, I, I, I certainly repent of, of taking the pill. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, or I repent of uh, condoms or whatever else. Um, but, but just bring it to the Lord as is. Just, just bring it to the Lord as is after a day or two. And then that's it. That's it. Don't keep thinking about it. Don't keep going over it. You've done what God wants you to do. But it's very important to, to face these realities here. With the most commonly used pill, there is the, the unresolvable question, at least unresolvable by human means, is, has there been an abortion here? Now, you might say, well, we always had condoms, so I didn't have any abortions. Well, that's still a big problem. There needs to be repentance here. And, but, but you don't have to deal with this extra complication of a possible abortion. But um, anyway, I, I hope this all makes sense to you. When we're talking about artificial uh, contraception and what is not always contraception, but actual abortion, artificial means of birth control, you're really talking about our Father, can you trust Him to plan a family? How does He work with us? Does, is He kind of this deistic God that just kind of says, well, I gave you intelligence, just take it from here. I don't pay attention to half of what you do. No, that's not the way He is. He's personal. He's incarnational. He's right there. It's a matter of the Lordship of Jesus in addition to the fatherhood of God. It's a matter of the revelation of the Holy Spirit. These things about artificial birth control, they're not a few old men over in Rome just trying to give young couples a hard time. This is the revelation of the Spirit to the churches for centuries. It's, it's been tried. It's been prayed about. I've never seen anybody moving in the Spirit who could deny that. So um, that's what we're talking about here. And as we said before, it's a matter of repentance. If there's been also fornication and adultery involved, it's a matter of breaking that bond. If there's been a means of birth control where there could have been an abortion or there certainly was an abortion, well, then uh, there we have to deal with that whole problem. We have to face that this is not just uh, killing a baby, but a parent killing a baby. We must face that parental bond, name that child, and say, oh, I can't face all that. You, you couldn't by human power, but remember, you can also face that the Lord loves you. He isn't condemning you. He wants to free you from sin. He died on the cross for you to be freed from sin. 
He can forgive. You don't have to hang, hang, just carry this around with you. You can be healed. You can be freed from guilt because of these ultimate realities of love and forgiveness and freedom. You can accept the other realities of, of murder of a child by his or her own parents, of disobedience to God's will, of moving away from the Lordship of Jesus, of stifling the Spirit, of just sinning. You can face these harsh realities, these terrible realities, because of the great realities of the Father's love and Jesus' redemption and the Holy Spirit's revelation. Okay, let's pray. Father, we just pray right now that all our brothers and sisters would just be under your son's lordship and realize how you father us in such a personal way, caring about every detail, just working it all out. We can trust you for our families. Send the Holy Spirit to teach us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Your perfect will be done. Lord, we believe what you've said through the church and what you've said through the word. We believe you. We live for you. We rejoice in living for you. We rejoice in the opportunity to repent and the opportunity to obey. Amen. I'm going to give you these, these materials once again. Sexual sin, abortion, the pill. Also, birth control and then the pill and the IUD from Couple to Couple League. Send in to the address that you've seen on your screen and these will help you. Praise God. He is good. We can trust Him. Lift up your voice in song to the Mighty One. Lift up your hands in praise. Fall on your knees at the throne of the Holy One. Offer yourself to the Ancient of Days. He is the light that shines in the darkness. He is the rock that stands.